there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walters World, and today we're outside of the Brecon Beacons National Park here in Wales. And today what we have for you are the things you should know before you come to Wales so you can have a better time when you're here. And the first thing you need to know is when you come to Wales, this is definitely a nature outdoors based vacation destination. This is not a really big city place to go. Now, having said that, Cardiff's a really cool city. There's some nice little towns around, but overall, in general, you're gonna be outside enjoying nature when you're here whether you're going up to snowdonia national park in the very north or you're here in the brecon beacons national park actually you can see the stars amazing here they're one of the 11 uh dark sky reserves in the world you can see that if you're gonna go to pembrokeshire coast and see and see the coast there coastline's fantastic tons of cycling tons of biking tons of hiking tons of outdoor stuff you're gonna do that's gonna be your big base of things you're gonna do when you're here and again, I think another thing I should say is you're also going to see a ton of castles, whether it's castle ruins or actually, you know, castles where they have it all done up in the period pieces. You will see that all over the country. OK, so that's the first thing I want to get out, get out of the way. Nature base with some castles thrown in. OK, now the next thing I got to talk about when you come to Wales is the weather. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. It rains a lot in Wales. Now, maybe not every single day. I'm not saying it's like a sheet of rain that starts when you cross the border but you do need to be prepared. Have your rain jacket, have your you know boots and stuff like that. You're gonna need that when you're here, especially the boots, I would say, because since you're gonna do the hiking and it does rain, it can get a little slick sometimes and having good hiking boots makes a really big difference for safety, comfort, and just, I mean, who wants wet feet anyway? And you're gonna wanna do the hikes here because it's gorgeous, all right? Now, moving on to some of the other kind of important touristy things. Um, you wanna know about the money when you come to Wales. They use the British pound, no big deal. There's no Welsh pound or anything like that. It's just a British pound. You have that, so there's no issues there. If you want to pay with credit card, not an issue. They sip credit card all over the place. Um, Visa, MasterCard, everywhere. American Express, I've found, is about 50-50 uh, in terms of acceptance and stuff like that. So you do have that. Um, if you want to go get cash out of the ATM, if you're in the town, go find a bank or a grocery store. I found those the ones with your best, you have the best chance of finding an ATM that's going to be working. So you do want to have a heads up for that. Now, when you're coming here, you might be want to know, Mark, where are we going to stay? How am I going to enjoy this? Well, believe me, we've had beautiful weather until today, okay? A little rain, but it hasn't been quite this bad. The accommodations here, there's tons of B&Bs, there's tons of Airbnbs, there's tons of homeaways, hotels, bed and breakfasts, hostels, stuff like that. There's a lot of options for you, but since this is kind of more of an outdoor kind of place, I recommend running a cottage a little bit out of town because you're going to be driving when you're going around Wales, okay? I recommend staying at a cottage out of town just so you can be more back to nature. You can see the stars at night and just relax because it's really kind of a cool thing. And if you're going to be doing your accommodation, you're probably going to do some shopping to get your food and go do your other stuff when you are here. In terms of shop times, make sure you get all your shopping done by about 6 p.m because the store is just closed. I mean, the downtowns, aside from the pub and the sports betting, are closed down and the restaurants. Everything else is just closed, like ghost towns a lot of times, okay? So you wanna make sure you get your shopping done by six so you can be stocked up. Now, I will say the grocery stores and gas stations do tend to stay open later than six, but honestly, you wanna get it all done by six so you can be back enjoying a nice cozy fire with the wind and the sheep banging away and stuff like that. So there is that. When you're going around, you're probably gonna say, hey, you know, I'm traveling, I gotta make sure I get all my devices, I can actually, you know, get, do I get cell coverage or how's Wi-Fi? Well, I've seen Wi-Fi, all the places we've stayed in Wales, decent Wi-Fi, no problem. Restaurants, pubs, places like that, had Wi-Fi code, just ask for the Wi-Fi code, or it might be on the table, you can get that, no problem, okay? In terms of cell coverage, though, I would say, if you're gonna be driving around, get the GPS, okay, because, what happens is since there's all the hills and it's very much a, a rural rural country, rural area, there's gonna be spotty cell service sometimes. So if you get the GPS on your rental car, that thing keeps it no matter what, you're all right. But you might not get cell service all the time. Like where we're staying right now, no cell service. I gotta walk about a mile up a hill for it to click on. Okay, so have a heads up for that one. Just because that could be a safety thing when you're when you're driving around. I guess talking about driving around, I should talk about transportation around Wales. Well, there's an extensive bus system. You can use buses to get all over the place. There's some train lines that go through Wales as well. Actually, the train lines are beautiful. I mean, if you can go to some ones to go through the national parks or are just going through the countryside, Wales is a gorgeous country to like take the train through. Even if you're just doing a day trip and like leave your car at the train station, 
go and come back, it's worth it. But overall, I'd say you need to rent a car when you're here to really explore and go see all the different, you know, castles and castle ruins, go and dif explore different parts of national parks and things like that. You do need to have your own transportation. Um, and I will say is when you drive here, remember, it's just like in England, just like in Scotland, I mean, it's the United Kingdom. They drive on the left here, and most of the time when you rent a car, it's going to be with stick shift, okay? You can get automatics, but man, they can cost a lot more, so it's mostly stick. When you do stick, it works the same way like in the U.S., but one thing I will say is when you're going to be put in reverse, there's probably a plunger you have to pull up and then move over to do that so, so you can get that. Also, when you're driving around here, there's a lot of roundabouts, so make sure you follow the signs. GPS is a lifesaver for that. You've got all kinds of other stuff. You've got uh, lava bread, uh, which is basically like seaweed pate with something you can have when it's here. Kind of an interesting kind of thing. But the food, you know, bangers and mash, fish and chips, you'll have those pretty straight up pub grub kind of stuff you can get and a few other international fairs in the, in the towns. One thing I will say though, if you're gonna go eat at the pub, one thing is make sure you know your, your number of your table when you go to order, because you're gonna order all your food when you go up and your drinks, you're gonna pay there and everything. You tell them what you're, I'm table 52. And you do that, they'll bring the food to you, but you will take your drinks to your table. Oh, another thing is if you're gonna be traveling Wales with your kids with all the hiking and stuff, it actually makes a decent kid stop. Um, I will tell you, kids probably will not be able to eat at the pub at night. So if you wanna have pub grub with the kids, go during the day, okay? So you have that. Uh, so just have a heads up for that. You might want to think about it. Now, when you're going around here, you're going to be taking tons and tons of pictures when you're here. The plugs are, are the UK plugs where it's like the two flat ones like this with the one on the top. You have that. Um, one thing I will say is when you plug it in, make sure you look and see if there's a little switch on the outlet because you might need to plug it in and then flick the switch to get it to work just so it'll charge up your devices. So you'll have that. When you are here and you're dealing with the locals, the locals are very friendly. I found the service to be just fine, but the whales are really happy to talk to you about whales and ask you, why are you here in this rainy country with your family? Would you be someplace warm like and, and sunny like Florida? And the thing is they, they have like a, a good sense of humor as well. They're very friendly. So you have fine there that goes in the service as well. They'll be fun and friendly. Not really any issues there. One thing I will say, there is another language here. Yes, they speak English here, but they also speak Welsh and all the signage will be in Welsh and English. And you'll see that around there and you'll look at Welsh and be like, I have no idea what's going on here. Don't worry, they, the locals know you don't and, and that's okay, all right? So I hope this helped you know a little bit more about coming to Wales before you come here so you feel more comfortable. It is a nice place. It is very much a rural setting. And yes, it does rain a little bit when you are here. I won't lie about that. But we've had a very nice relaxing time hiking and doing stuff that with the kids here. So it has been fun. Anyway, I'll say bye from Wales. We hope you have a good time. If you want to learn more, the don'ts of Wales, the shocks of Wales, five things to eat in Wales, or Britain, or England, or Germany, or stuff like that, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions, and we hope you have a great time here in Wales um, because it is a nice little place to visit. So there you go. Um, also, we want to say thanks to our patrons on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. If you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash waltersworld and become a patron. Bye from Wales.